Thanks everyone for joining this session. We will present the journey and the experiences of Novartis.com to migrate uh, Drupal site from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 while making a drastic transformation of the portfolio of website. But before we start, let me say a few words about the company. Uh, that's not a sales pitch, don't worry. So, Novartis is one of the top five pharmaceutical companies in the world with the ambition to be among the top three. Our team, the channel management team, is one business group within the company and we are responsible for all the corporate channels. These include the external facing website, such as Novartis.com, the intranet and the social media. Today, we're gonna have Marcello, our technical guy, myself, responsible for the platform and operation, especially specifically Novartis.com, the flagship of their organization. And then we have Francois, our content guru, who will be discussing the content part. Our team is mostly based in Basel, Switzerland, but we also have people in the US and in India, therefore we cover the full range of time zones. Now, before we start, I would like to make this session a little more fun and understand this is the end of a long day and maybe you had a few crazy nights Therefore, uh, we need to have something to keep you awake. The goal here is to have a few quiz, and every time you'll hear, you'll know that's the time for you to open your eyes and to show how smart you are. So, if you have questions yourself, please keep them for the end of the session. We have a Q&A. What is a corporate website, you might ask? So, corporate website is the place where we, in, provide information about the company itself, the history, the leadership, talk about the strategy for us, about the disease we're trying to cure. We have a few things about communication, such as press releases and stories. We also display the jobs uh, open for the public, but we do not sell, sell medication or we do not do marketing. From a figures perspective, we, are, we have website covering 60 countries, a very large set of visitors, and then therefore a large page of uh, number of page views. We also have a lot of integration, technical integration on that system and our website are covering mostly uh, 30 plus languages. And then finally, the industry where we deal, pharma is extremely strict. So things such as uh, data privacy for patient is a top topic, as well as we're dealing with patient Accessibility has to be on the top of our mind because of impairment they might have. On the operational side, we also have to deal with a different uh, constraint. We are a newsroom, therefore we, are, we have potentially some news coming up at any time of the day or the week. Novartis.com is also a publicly traded company, therefore we also use Novartis.com as the uh, channel for the financial results and you can guess a 50 billion plus dollar company uh, those data are pretty confidential if they are published before the uh, official time. And then finally, coming back to this uh, larger set of uh, uh, countries, we have a large set of sh uh, stakeholders to deal with. So, before getting into the why and the whole trip that we have done, I need to provide you with a small background to understand the situation. So, many years ago, when the world was young, we had a set of websites with content. They were all kind of dis different from a technology perspective, from a content perspective, and nothing was the same. In 2014, the situation, situation changed, our group was created, and we started to have a platform that was based on Drupal 7, that was the first almost in the industry, open source, and we provided a platform with the share technology, share set of features and share um, governance. That was a big success that helped to make everything more consistent. Like everyone, a Beluga, perhaps a small thing, the name of the project, the goal and the name of that project was Beluga because Beluga are usually standalone animals that group together when they migrate in the summertime. 2019, like everyone, you heard about the end of life for Triple Seven, which was at that time scheduled for November 2021. So we faced uh, a big question. We had two paths. The first path, which was uh, fairly easy, is to tell IT 
to take all the Drupal site that we had to move from uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. And as you understand before, we are business, so we ask IT to do it, we wait, and then when it's done, we celebrate. IT is here. <laughs> the other path, slightly more complex, is to review the portfolio and perhaps to ask ourselves that question. Is there an opportunity to do improvement? And here, then that could be a very long journey. Strenuous is like going through a jungle with a machete. And you know what? Some people like to suffer. So we went through that long path. We did a lot of analysis. What we needed is not something based on gut feel, but really based on data. And we also had to have a really strong business case in order to justify all the cost we would have. The outcome was to take all those websites that we had, all those country websites, and to bring them all under one single umbrella of what is .com. So every country website would be slot into what is .com into uh, the way it was described here. So global at the top and country section underneath. The reason for that are multiple. First, all the country would benefit from the SEO authority for Novartis.com. So Novartis.com has a very strong authority and any pages of Novartis.com in Google would be ranked better than any other pages from Novartis country website. So by putting those country websites within Novartis.com, then they benefit from that authority. Second, by merging everything under this, um, making this consolidation, we'd have to use that business model to define if we would keep a site, merge it, or close it. That would help us to uh, justify some uh, merger and everything. Third, we could go through a content consolidation. So the idea here would to put all the global corporate content at the global level and have the countries just manage their local country, uh, content. With this distinction, then we have simplification of content to reduce uh, duplication. And then finally, at that time and even now, many countries are going through this kind of a consolidation, having one single website to manage all the countries. And we also want to be part of those cool guys. So if we go back to that journey that we described before, so we went to that silo architecture, which was a little messy. We went afterwards with the Belga, Drupal 7, which was quite a big success. And we leveraged all those benefits to build on top and put more things about the content, uh, SEO with its domain name uh, strategy. So the new program was called Arctic. And now, <laughs> question for you. So what were the two main reasons for naming that program Arctic? You have 20 seconds to answer. T-shirt to wins. <laughs> Any suggestions? Okay, go ahead. That's perfect. And the <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Impressed. Exactly. So, in fact, the first reason is because Beluga are migrating to the, um, to the Arctic in summertime. And then, really, the Arctic, no country owns it. It's kind of a council of multiple countries managing it the same way Novartis.com is kind of an umbrella for multiple countries. That was the, uh, the idea behind. So, going further, you understand that such a large program with so many countries, so many c stakeholders, uh, we had to have a very strong structure to manage it. What we did is to put these initiatives into seven different streams uh, to manage that thing. And then to discuss about some of those streams, I'm going to invite our colleague, Francois, to discuss about the content. Thank you, Pierre. I'll take the mic. I'm a bit too tall for this mic. Um, thanks, Pierre, for the introduction. So yeah, um, I really thought how to present the content and information architecture part, I'll call it IA, um, of the program. And I thought the, the best way to do it would be just to drive you through a couple of questions we, we tried to answer uh, in the scoping and phasing 
of the of the program. Uh, these questions are extremely simple, right? But um, actually, they're not so simple to answer. Uh, the why question is something Pierre already dealt with. Remember the Arctic end of life, uh, sorry, Drupal 7 end of life and various business justifications. I will deal with the when, how and what question. So when do we migrate, how we did it and um, what we migrated. And I will let my colleague deal with the where question at the end of the presentation. Right, so into the when. So as Pierre said, Novartis is quite a big company. Uh, we have uh, yearly plenty of communication activities going on. So it's quite, it's not so easy to find the right moment to migrate a huge website as Novartis.com. As you can see, I already spoiled the date. It was in October 2021. But of course, plenty of things happened before. Um, so to choose the date, the thing is at Novartis, we have very clear period of times, right? End of year, like November, December, are usually the medical congresses period, like uh, ESMO, ASH. Uh, end of October is usually our Q3 financial results, so it's in a way, no way for us to migrate a website at this point. On the other side, beginning of the year is extremely busy as well. You have big forums like World Economic Forums, uh, GP Morgan, and we also have our Q4 financial results beginning of the year. So actually, October 8 was a great date for us right after the soft period of the summer and just before the busy period at the end of the year. So as Pierre said, we went through a planning and, and scoping phase where we tried to answer the questions you saw on the previous slide. And we started on migration. You saw a little bit of migrating. Um, and we had a chance during the migration period to migrate two global sites, Novartis Foundation and Novartis Biome, which are very similar to the Novartis.com website since they are global and monolingual. So it was great training for us before Novartis.com migration. You see, we allowed, we allowed ourselves uh, two to three weeks of freeze period, content freeze, just to avoid any discrepancies when migrating. So big uh, first achievement for the team was October 2021. But now that wasn't the end of the project, and not even half of it. Um, we then had to migrate 55 countries through six ways of migrations. Um, and as you can see, the whole project took approximately three years, which is kind of uh, a long period of time, and it was a tremendous amount of work to put into this project. Uh, worth to keep in mind that 2020, 2021 were, the, of course, the COVID years, so it impacted the project as well. Uh, having to work from home and adapt to the new world was something. Now, going to the how we did it, well, it's, of course, it's a valid question. How do you migrate um, a global sites, 55 country sites, more than 20,000 pages, dealing with 200 content partners approximately, and everything in 17 months for the global sites? Well, um, one of the big factors is, of course, the manpower. You need, you need, you need people to, to do the job, right? And that's what we did. We, we hired contractors for uh, planning and scoping. We hired a company also to help in the one mastering job. So we had a team of approximately 10 webmasters to support us. Um, important to note that the global sites were migrated manually. We didn't have any technical migration for them. Um, I will come back on that on the what we migrated because it's actually one of the reasons why we did a manu manual migration. Uh, we wanted to, do, to go the extra mile content-wise. Country though, where um, we had a technical migration for them mainly for the big bulk of the migration, uh, like uh, nodes and, and, and file system. But all nodes were always handily revised by the group of 10 webmasters, so it was quite a huge job, right? Um, of course, when you do that, you go through tons of Excel sheets, um, and believe me, we, we went through them. Um, these are just examples for, from .com, uh, Novartis.com. Um, but what's really interesting is what is within these uh, Excel sheets, so the content itself. Um, as you know, websites are nothing without the audiences behind them. So that leads me to my little quiz. So on Novartis.com, according to you, um, what's the largest audience in terms of visitors on Novartis.com? Note that I added some um, icons just for the audience specific, industry specific audiences, so patients and um, healthcare professionals. Now, do you have an idea which one is the 
biggest one in terms of numbers? You can take a guess. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. And actually by quite a margin, it's more than 50% of the traffic on the Vartis.com. Uh, knowing that we have approximately 9.5 million visitors per year and 32 million page views, uh, you can imagine the number of people coming just for the, the career section of our website. So into the what we migrated question. Well, I think the main important part is we didn't want to be the two guys on the right side of this picture, right? So this migration was a great opportunity for us to improve the site, clean the pages, uh, improve the navigation, and that's what we did. Um, Content-wise, so as Pia said, Novatis.com is quite an old site. Uh, we've been accumulating lots of content, press release, story articles, various content types, and this migration was a great opportunity just to clean up. So we reviewed our retention policies, make sure it makes sense, delete outdated content, and that was very useful for the migration. It actually simplified it a lot. Um, something we went bold on was the navigation. So in, on Drupal 7 in Beluga, that was an example of the top one navigation. So very traditional, our company, our focus, our science, very uh, simple, but it works, right? It, it, it makes the job. But for this type of navigation, you have two problems, or at least we face two problems. The first one is these kinds of elements can change, right? Companies change, their focus change a lot. So it implies a lot of content changes as well. Since we were migrating, we thought maybe there's something to do here. Second big downside um, is more Novartis specific. Our communication strategy is very much audience focused. Um, so we just went bold on it and we decided that uh, we'd change our first level navigation to really bring audiences at the first place. And that's what we did. So as you can see, that's an example of the top one level navigation, patients, HCPs, media, but investors, partners, suppliers, you could name them all. Um, and that's actually very useful because audiences don't really change for websites, right? In the pharma industry, you will always have patients, you will always have healthcare professionals. So that was actually a great argument for changing the whole navigation. Um, to stay very high level, I just would like to go a bit deeper in one specific subject we, we changed for the, for the site, and this topic is ESG. So I don't know if you heard about ESG before, it's environmental, social and governance. And the reason I'm talking about this is because in Drupal 7, we had a very nice section called corporate responsibility, and it was including pages like uh, environmental sustainability, uh, access to healthcare, this kind of topic, right? But when we changed navigation, we faced um, a problem that was where, where to put these elements. And actually we had another candidate that we didn't know where to put, where everything related to reporting, codes, policies, and guidelines, transparency and disclosures, these kinds of topics, right? And what's cool with ESG, it's actually a, um, a generic term, a whole theme that contains all, all that are just coded. So both access to healthcare, more environmental topics, but also a bit of more financial topics like reporting, et cetera. So we created a whole section to merge all the content and it was very helpful for the migration. Um, right, the downside to do this um, company-focused navigation and moving to a audience-focused navigation was of course redirect, because if you change your level one navigation, you end up with uh, hundreds of thousands of redirects, and that was actually a pain with, for the team. Um, but nevertheless, Drupal is pretty uh, strong to manage redirects, so uh, that was fine. Right, now I will let my colleague come to the stage and talk to you more about the where we migrated question. So Marcello, please. So. So I'd like to take a step back um, before answering the, the work question, um, talk about the, the main technical challenge that we had. Uh, the first one was switching from a, a multi-domain approach to a single domain approach um, and ma ma merging everything under a unique domain umbrella. The second one is um, we are running a multi-site and shared core base uh, instance. 
Um, so configuration management was a, a challenge. So I'm going to list some of the examples um, of some of the challenges that, that we had. And then the last one is financial results. So we had to find a way we can prepare confidential content, um, keeping it secret and non-accessible by authenticated users. So multi-domain and single domain. Um, okay, so we had the option to uh, go with one huge database for all our uh, multi-sites, or we had the option to have local database and separate database for each site. Of course, we went with local and separate database, mainly because of uh, lo 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 local regulation, uh, data privacy, GDPR, and also because the data needs to sit within the, the, the site jurisdiction. Then another requirement that we have was uh, having the same underlying code base. So that's why I mentioned before shared code base. Um, deployment must impact all sites simultaneously. And then the last one is sites are available under the same domain, which is the main topic. So this slide explains what we went through from the multi-domain to the single domain. Um, we had to include an additional piece of information here, which is the language identifier, um, as you can see um, on the right side, um, which we didn't have before. Um, and we include this also on monolanguage sites. So for example, in Germany, we will have DE and DE um, duplicated. So we have two options here. Um, we could buy, go with the domain-based approach or we could go with the path-based approach. Of course, we went with the path-based approach because it fits more the, the, the requirements that, that we had. Um, how we did it? Uh, we leveraged the, the domains.php um, file where we mapped the front end with the back end. And in this case, as you can see, you have two different front end. One, CHDE, which is the Swiss website in German, uh, mapped to the Novartis CH database and also the CHFR, which is the Swiss website in French, mapped to the same database. It works, but there is a but. Um, as you can see, there is like a backend URL and a public URL. Um, Drupal needs a language identifier, especially to, um, to build multi-language capabilities and to translate content. But we don't need this identifier when people visit the website through the www. So we had to remove this additional information from the, the public URL. We actually didn't have to just remove it. We need to reflect this information within the, the, the URL prefix, the CHDE and CHFR. So we kind of developed a little bit um, some custom code. Uh, in the configuration, we were able to specify these four um, value, the country code, language code, backend URL, and public URL. And with this information available, we were able to build the logic to do this transformation that I showed you before. Um, an additional challenge that we have, which is also similar to, uh, kind of related to this additional language identifier, is the, the sitemap XML, um, which, as you can see in the slide, it contains the additional slash DE or slash FR, which we don't need when we visit from WWW. So with a little snippet of code, we managed to solve this, but um, Unfortunately, after the migration to Drupal 10, this is broken again, so we are currently fixing it. Um, the second challenge is configuration management, which is a hard topic in the community still, a hot topic in the community, so I'm not going to go very deep into it. Um, the situation we had, we had several use cases. Um, we have the case of common configuration, for example, the cache strategy and the Acquia connector. Uh, those are um, configurations that are the same for all the websites. Um, so for this, we use, for example, the default configuration. We just put the YAML file in the uh, default configuration, and we're good. Then we have situation where we have per site configuration. So for example, the list of enabled module, the core extensions, or multi-language settings that we only need, for example, a multi-language site. And in order to manage this kind of configuration, we use the config split. And then there are other cases. Um, for example, the external link module settings, which we couldn't find a solution for, so we had to use the config ignore. Um, I'm going to elaborate a bit more on this, the, especially the external link configuration. Um, so you can see in the slide here, we have on the left side, this is the configuration page for the external link module. On the left side is what we identify as global configuration. So things that are common for every website. For example, an external icon that we place next to an external link, or the fact that we want to open an external link in a new window. This is common for every website. And then on the right side, we have what we identified as configuration, which is different side by side. For example, the regular expression that determines what's an external link and what's an internal link. 
and this changes side by side. Now, the problem is that we cannot, this is the YAML file um, related to this particular configuration. Uh, the problem is that we couldn't, the, the red highlighted part is the global part, and the green highlighted part is the custom part side by side. Um, unfortunately, it's one YAML file, and we couldn't find a solution to split this. So we're looking at the way to kind of like micromanage those permission in, with more granularity, which we haven't, found, we haven't found yet without custom development. So that's why we, we use the config ignore. Um, now, the quits is coming. I just wanted to set up the context first so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, let's say we have a role defined in our, in our code base and the role is called site owner. Um, this role is defined in the user role site owner YAML file and it's, um, it exists in the global configuration. Then we have a module that we call content protection which define a permission and the permission is called bypass content uh, protection and the module is not installed on the website. So that is the question. So in Drupal 10, what happens if you edit any permission for the site owner role and the Novartis content protection which define this permission is not installed? Do you get an error or nothing is missing and everything goes well? Anyone? Either one or two? No one? Two. Nothing. No. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so the right answer is error. You get an error. <laughs> um, but only in Drupal 10. So you were almost there. In Drupal 9, this would have been ignored. So even if there is a permission which doesn't exist because the module is not enabled, Drupal will still save the, the form. But in Drupal 10, unfortunately, you cannot save it, you get an error. Um, so this is probably something that uh, can be improved. Um, but I guess even if you did it wrong, I think you deserve a t-shirt for the, for the bravery. <laughs> and then the last topic, I wanted to discuss is financial results. Financial results is a very important event for our company because we have to prepare so much confidential content that then needs to be disclosed at a specific time. Um, so those are the requirements. Uh, prepare confidential content while ensuring con um, operational continuity. Prevent this confidential content from being accessed uh, by authenticated users for obvious reason. Uh, big bang publishing. We, after all this content is prepared, we want to push live all in once. And then the last one is make changes to the target size during the freeze. And I will elaborate this more in the next slides. One of the challenges that we had is we cannot draft or moderate files because we are not using a digital assets management at the moment. So Drupal, as far as I know, uh, doesn't provide this kind of functionality. So I'm going to talk about what we did in Drupal 7. Uh, in Drupal 7, we use an approach which is called copy, freeze, lock, and prepare. We take Novartis.com. We make an exact copy of it and we, we spin up, we, we make a clone and we call it secret.novartis.com. And when I say a clone, I mean we copy database, the database, the files, and the code base, of course, is already shared because we have a, a multi site installation. Then we freeze novartis.com, meaning no more changes are allowed to the site, and we start preparing the content on the secret.novartis.com environment. Of course, before we start preparing the content, we protect this environment um, so that people cannot access it um, through a shield, a shield module, for example, or through other um, authentication system that we use within the company. And then we use the deploy module. Um, basically, we create uh, buckets. We put the content in those buckets, um, and we organize those buckets in a, um, in a way that bucket one goes at 7 a.m., for example, and bucket two goes at 7 or 5. Um, and we just need to click a button. Uh, when you click the button, the deployment module will just transfer those information into the target website. It works, nice solution, but there is always a but. There may be network constraints. So if the depo deployment partially fails, uh, we cannot redeploy again. Uh, there is no way to test in advance. Otherwise, we might need to spin up a, a third environment, a third website, which is time consuming and resource consuming too. Um, if the incremental node ID has changed in the target, in this case, the secret website, uh, we might have conflict when we deploy, even if we use the UUID module. And we need to keep those deployment buckets small. 
um, because the bigger they are, the bigger is the risk of um, a network failure or of the deployment failing. And we cannot change anything on the target website because as soon as we create an additional node on the target website, the delta has changed, um, so you have more an additional node ID on the target, and which creates conflicts. And even with, when we use UUID, that could be a problem. So in Drupal 10, we kind of like reinvented the solution um, and we develop a custom solution. Um, so we still make a copy of the website uh, from noartist.com to secretnoartist.com. And this is the step one. Let's explain. Um, this um, shows the domains of PHP. Again, as I mentioned before, this maps the front end with the back end. And this is the current solution. Um, step two, this is when we want to start preparing the confidential content, we switch the two websites. We prod one, prod.artist.com, which points to the secret database and secret file folder, and the secret website points to the folder that was previously pointed by the original website. And as you can see, the domains of PHP has changed. Um, we have switched the two uh, map domains. Um, in, this in this phase here, we, um, after this is done, we start preparing confidential content. Um, we enabled any uh, old password authentication system and no one can access it apart from the webmaster involved into the confidential content preparation. And then the day of the financial results, we just switch back, switch back to the previous situation by changing the domains of PHP file again. Um, it's not as simple as that because when we switched in step two, um, also the file folder has changed. So uh, people, if people have bookmarked the URL, this has changed and they are no longer able to access the file. So we had to also play around with some redirects through in Cloudflare, which I'm more than happy to discuss if you're interested um, offline. So this solution worked for us. Um, and here you can see the pro and cons of both solution. Um, with the Drupal 10 solution, we can have a big bang approach because we switch the domains, we change the content of domains PHP, we clear cache and everything is immediately available. Um, there is no issue with bandwidth. Of course, if there is no internet, we cannot change the domain's PHP, but this is a bigger problem. Uh, we can edit content, pu publish content, anyway we are protected by the shield module. We can review the confidential content. There is a problem with the file URL, which I've changed if people have bookmarked them, but, um, so this is not good, but um, we, we play around with the Cloudflare rules. Um, yeah, and we can publish the content immediately. And the other thing which is not mentioned in this slide is that during the freeze, we can make changes to the target website. Um, so if there is an important announcement when the press release, which needs to go live on the live website, we will have to upload this twice on both websites. Otherwise, when we switch back, we will lose the content um, again. And that's it. I think I'll get back to Pierre. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marcello. So here is kind of a sample of our landing pages for countries under novasis.com. And then now I would like to take this down to a close and summarize what we have discussed. First, with our unified domain strategy, we benefit of two things. First one being the SEO authority, because the country website now plugged into novasis.com are going to benefit from this SEO uh, authority from the watches.com itself, and two, with the content, so we have now all the global content at the global level, and then the corporate and the um, local countries are just looking at for their local uh, content themselves. The second one, with this new structure, we went through this exercise of trying to merge, close, whatever it doesn't fit the business model, therefore the landscape at the end is a lot slim, uh, simpler. Third, with this business, with this uh, audience uh, first approach, our information architecture is far more sustainable in the long term. And we also have something easier for the visitors. They find the content uh, a lot quicker. Finally, the outcome is a great improvement in many KPIs. As you can see, uh, many places compared between 2021 and 2023, we had some drastic improvement and that's uh, significant. Our journey, however, is not finished. So we have done the migration, and now we still have a few things to put on the table. Uh, first, right now we're going through a brand refresh, which will be revealed pretty soon. We want to leverage a digital asset management. We are about to finish something related to the uh, event management. 
a content sharing hub is an idea as well to distribute content. And then um, also something we would like to do is to give back to the community. We have used many Drupal modules uh, built by the overall community and we'd like to use some of the use some of the modules that we have created ourselves and bring it back to the uh, community uh, uh, for the future. The journey was not without difficulties and during that journey we learned a lot and I would like to share a few of those uh, pieces of wisdom. First, for such a large program you really need a strong leadership otherwise you assign a task without the power to execute it. Second, as um, Sarah Furness was saying yesterday during this uh, keynote leadership, there is time for listening to people and there is time for taking decision. Know what to use when because you need to be able to move forward. Three, everything takes way longer, way longer than expected. Being on the content side or on the technical side. Fourth, if you want to make, make big improvement, you're gonna have to go through a long journey, which can be difficult. Don't be afraid. And fourth, I think the major one, if you do such a program uh, migration, if content is not on your driver's seat, you're missing the point. Content is the driver for such a big initiative, otherwise you're gonna miss the benefit. So with this, I would like to use that stage to thank a few partners that we used during this uh, exercise. On the business side, we had uh, Camel Web helping us a lot really with the content migration, all the small hands that, used, that um, Francois was using to migrate everything. On the IT side, uh, we had HCL developers, Acquia for the platform, and of course, uh, all those uh, Drupal modules that we use uh, from the community. With this, getting to the end of that uh, session, and I'm opening the floor for the Q&A. So um, was your collaboration with the agencies who helped you develop this, um, how was the work? Um, so was it very agile or something else? Um, <laughs> the approaches at how yeah. which you worked together. Yeah, I think there is... I think the collaboration was at several levels. You had the agency for anything related to the technical part, I would say. And we also had a strong collaboration to be done with all the uh, stakeholders from a content perspective, all the countries owner. So with the agencies, I would say we had experience for example, with our, our partner for the content and they have also experience from the past from other migrations. So that was, I would say the easy part uh, on the content side. On the development side uh, with the IT, so it was a long process. Uh, so it first need to, uh, we need to first understand the, the vision. And then once you have uh, everybody aligned and it's this long path to get to this MVP site. So the first two global websites that um, Francois talked about, what is foundation and uh, what is biome, those were kind of the, I wouldn't say the guinea pig, but the, uh, the first way to validate what we had. And afterwards we went through the, um, the final big bang for novartis.com. Collaboration, I think, was extremely good. Uh, I think no, Volodymyr from IT would uh, say. Business has been extremely involved with IT. I think we had uh, collaboration really tight. That helps a lot to make the, uh, uh, the path forward for such a large project. I think it's, you have to have this uh, collaboration between the two. If you just send the requirements over the fence and expect for something great on the, on the other side, then it uh, doesn't help. Any other question? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I I saw that you went with this separate databases approach at the end, 
and I understand that this is beneficial for like more rigorous uh, separation of access between the sites and so on. But uh, do you, after all, eventually, do you still think that it was worth uh, doing it this way? Because you know, like it could have been uh, solved within one database with proper access management as well, and then you would uh, have benefited with. Like at the end, it would have been maybe simpler uh, at, at the very end to manage a single Drupal site with a single database. Uh, yes. So the access manager was one of the topics, one of the reasons why we were thinking about one unique database or several databases, because of course you benefit from one single database, you can manage all the users. Uh, but the regulation we had in place uh, forced us to go with local databases. Also, there are solutions in place at the moment where we could still achieve this uh, um, unified user management, uh, even if we have separate databases. Um, so, where, for example, we have the, with the know, JSON API or with these different tools that allow us to have, make this centralized. So, it was not a, a driver factor, this, uh, access uh, this um, user management. Um, more was like, for example, during the financial results when we have to copy the database, and um, it's different if we copy one unique database, it could be like several gigabytes, rather than copy just one database for Novartis.com, which is local, unify, uh, unique, and it's much smaller um, to manage. Um, so those were like the reason why we, and I don't think we are thinking to switch back to um, the idea of having one unique database, because at the moment this is everything we need and we, we benefit from, from, from this situation at the moment. Um, but we're still looking at solution for unified uh, access management. Uh, and that's why we also use a content sharing app because of course it's not one unique database. You have several sites. So how do you share the content between those sites? So there are solutions in place. If there were no solution in place, definitely the one unique database would have been the only option. Um, challenging because of the local regulation, but uh, yeah, thankfully we didn't have to <laughs> go that way. Any other questions? Um, for the dealing with la identifying the language in the paths for your domains, um, you obviously have the challenge of Drupal kind of normally expects just a single language identifier. You had your single domain with its country and language thing. Did you explore using like a custom language negotiator for Drupal? What alternative did you use instead? I'm not sure exactly what, where the option um, explored, um, again, because we are from the business, um, but uh, the simplest solution and the one with less development was this one, uh, because you add the language and country um, prefix, um, and you just have to deal with what Drupal adds at the end, which is this additional language identifier. Um, and it also perfectly matched with uh, the, the, the intention that we have to have this, uh, everything under this uh, un unique umbrella. Um, Drupal provides a lot of those functionality out of the, bo out, out of the box. Uh, that's why the configuration uh, page that I showed you before uh, only includes, for example, the public URL, the backend URL. It is not something that we develop or the, a configuration that we provide. This is coming from Drupal. We only need to tell Drupal, like, okay, this is the language identifier, this is the prefix. So, and do the transformation. Um, we also wanted to move all the heavy lifting to Cloudflare when possible. So, this is why we this solution where the only, I wouldn't say the only Drupal component, is not just the domain's PHP, there is also some little module that was developed as well, but this uh, is the one with the, le the least impact on, the, on Drupal and to move the, the heavy lifting to, to Cloudflare. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but if not, I'm more than happy to catch up offline with more details. Perfect, I believe, I think we are running out of time, so one last thing, um, there is still those conservation opportunities happening, so be ready for that, still on Friday. Thank you everyone.